Now, in this chapter, we're dealing with valuation issues, and we are in this problem, we're going to deal with the valuation of a common stock. Now, the situation they gave us really is one where the, the dividends and the earnings of the company are growing at a constant rate. Now, the best way to do that and to value that is to use the constant growth model, the Williams model, the Gordon model which is a little formula that you'll see at the end of this problem. But the first, oh, I don't know, A through D here, this is, they're stepping you through the same steps that you would do if you were doing super normal growth or, or non-constant growth. But they're implying, they're not implying, but they're, they're giving us constant growth. And so what they're gonna show us is that whether we go the long way to get the value or whether we use the little formula, you end up getting the same answer. And so they're trying to prove out the constant growth model, the, the Williams model, the Gordon model. Now this problem reads like this. It says, your broker offers to sell you some shares of Banson & Company, common stock, that paid a dividend of $2 yesterday. That means $2 is D0. Banson's dividends is expected to grow at 5% per year for the next three years. Again, constant growth. If you buy the stock, you plan to hold it for three years and then sell it. The appropriate discount rate is 12%. The A part says, find the expected dividend for each of the next three years. That is, calculate D1, D2, and D3. Note that D0 is $2. The B part says, given that the first dividend payment will occur one year from now, find the present value of the dividend stream. That is, calculate the present value of D1, D2, D3. The C part says you expect the price of the stock three years from now to be $34.73. That is, you expect uh, P3 to equal $34.73. Uh, discounted at a 12% rate was the present value of the expected future stock price. In other words, calculate the present value of $34.73. The D part reads if you plan to buy the stock, hold it for three years, and then sell it, for $34.73, what is the most you'd be willing to pay for the stock? That is, what's the intrinsic value of the stock? The E part now says use equation 9-2, which is the little Williams model, the Gordon model, the constant growth model, and says to calculate the present value of the stock, assume that the growth rate is a constant rate of 5%, and that, is, that it is constant. The F part says if the value of the stock is dependent upon how long is the value of the stock dependent upon how long you hold the stock. If you plan to hold it for you know six years or eight years, what's the value of the stock? In other words, if you plan, if your planning holding period were two years or five years rather than three years, would it affect the value of the stock that you just calculated? Now again, as you know, if you're going to do non-constant growth which is what they're stepping you through here, the first thing you do is you forecast all your dividends. And in this case, we know D0, the current dividend, to be $2. And the dividend is going to grow at 5% per year. So $2 multiplied by 1.05 gives us $2.10. $2.10 times 1.05 gives us $2.21. 221 times 1.05, 1 plus the growth rate, gets us $2.32. So that's the forecasted dividends during this holding period, which is three years. The second step, if you're doing non-constant growth, find the present value of the dividends received you know, during supernormal growth, or in this problem, the dividends you receive during your holding period. So you have these three dividends here. They're all lump sum cash flows. To find the present value of a lump sum, you multiply it by your PVIF. So to find the present value of D1, we multiply it by our present value of interest factor at 1 and 12%. The I, the discount rate, is your required return, which in the problem they told us was 12%. Your PVIF is 0.8929. Multiply that by $2.10, you get $1.88. $2.21 multiplied by your PVIF at 2 and 12%, gets you $1.76, and 232 times your PVIF at 3 and 12%, which is 0.7118, gets you $1.65. If you add these three numbers up, that's the present value of all the dividends received during the holding period. 
non-constant growth, we'd say that's the present value the dividends received during supernormal growth. The example that I showed you, we calculated the price of the stock at the end of supernormal growth. In this problem, they told us that at the end of the holding period, they expect the price of the stock to be $34.73. $34.73 is the present value of all future dividends growing at 5% a year, discounted at 12% a year, you get $34.73. So this is the value of all future dividends valued three years from now. We don't want it valued three years from now, we want it valued today. It's a lump sum cash flow, we multiply it by our PVIF at 3 and 12%. Now I want you to note, these two interest factors are indeed the same. Don't make the mistake of thinking that's, that's an error, it's not. Multiply 0 0.7118 times $34.73, you get $24.72. And this is the present value of all dividends received after year three. Add that to the present value of the dividends received during the first three years, you have the present value of all future dividends, which is $30.01. Note that we did not add this number into the answer. Uh, that's, that's the present. The present is part of the past. An asset is only worth the present value of all the future cash flows. Now this is the long way of doing this problem. What they want you to use is the constant growth model, the, the Williams model, the garden model, which says that if you have constant growth, you find the value of the stock by taking D1, the next dividend, and dividing it by K minus G, K being your required return, G being your constant growth rate. Well, we calculated D1 to be $2.10. That's the numerator. They tell us that our required return is 12%, the decimal equivalent of that, of course, being 0.12, and they told us that the constant growth rate was 5% or 0.05. We find that if we use this little formula, we get what? $30. We have a one cent rounding error over here. Other than that, you get the same answer whether you go through all of this process or whether you use the constant growth model. They're trying to show you here that you get the same answer. You want to make your life easy, use the constant growth model. They also ask you about the holding period. Would, would the value of this stock change if your holding period was five years or eight years or 12 years? The answer is no, because today we've just calculated that the present value of all future dividends is $30. That's its intrinsic value. Five years, eight years, 12 years doesn't make any difference because those would just be future dividends. We've already taken that into account.